you forgave the iniquity of my sin.
O Lord, you granted your prophets strength to resist the temptations of the devil and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. For this seventh Sunday after Pentecost is written in the book of the prophet Amos, the seventh chapter. Amos writes, This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in its hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel said to Jeroboam king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. The Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We join in the seventh commandment and its meaning. You shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, the first chapter. St. Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We rise to the Holy Gospel.
The message has never changed. It has always been the same from the very beginning. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If you search the scriptures hard enough, you realize that this was the message of Moses, of Jonah, and of the prophet Amos. It was also the message of St. John the Baptist as he was baptizing at the River Jordan of the many who came out to see him. It was also the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the very message that we heard last week from St. Mark's Gospel when he sends them out two by two into the surrounding countryside and villages. And it was the message, and is the message of Jesus himself to this day. When you take a look at John in the Gospels, he almost seems more like an Old Testament character than he fits into the New. I don't know about you, but whenever I read the accounts of John the Baptist from the very beginning at his miraculous conception with Zechariah and Elizabeth, to then finding him out at the River Jordan dressed in camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey, pointing people to the Lamb of God, and in a way, when you read his preaching as well in the Gospels, you find out that John really has some pretty rough edges. He doesn't seem to care about what anybody else thinks about him. The only thing he cares about is sharing the message and baptizing the masses. I think he fits in better with Jeremiah and Elijah and Isaiah than he does with Peter. James, and John. But I also wonder, as John walked in the ways of Elijah, and as Jesus would say, he is Elijah who is to come if you believe it, that he was going to face many of the same trials that the Old Testament prophets did as well. We have to remember that John's martyrdom was not unique in and of itself. John's beheading falls perfectly in a way into the time of our country's history that we're now in today. Grim, violent, and messy. Churches that remain open during the pandemic were oftentimes vilified as unloving and uncaring. How could you not love your people and shut your doors to keep them safe? We heard. A number of pastors, not only up in Canada, but also in the United States, were also arrested because they allowed people to gather within the doors of the church, trying to feed their people God's gifts in the best way that they knew how. We saw it in places like Nevada over this past year as well, when everything started to finally loosen up where they allowed people to start coming back into the casinos and hotels in mass, but it was still not safe enough for you to go to church. The culture tries with much success, I hate to say, make Christian churches celebrate the sins of this world 
whether it's by accepting all sorts of different lifestyles and all manner of sins as the norm. Because those churches still want to be relevant in a way. But when a church becomes relevant to the rest of the culture, who's to say that the church just isn't a part of the culture? And there's no real difference anymore. If you read things from the Lutheran Liberty Center out of Washington, D.C., or articles that Lutherans for Life, or even some of our mission work that happens throughout the world, I'm sure that you've heard of believers who have been persecuted, arrested, sometimes even beaten or beheaded because of their confession of faith. How true did Jesus' words ring in our ear this morning? Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. It's easy to despair. <clears throat> It's easy to say, what's the use? It's easy to throw up our hands and look at many of our congregations that were quite small anyways and still not see some of those who have not been back to church since last March and February. <coughs> it is easy to roll over play death. Yet even in death. And I wonder if John the Baptist realized that once he made it to prison under Herod's rule, that most likely there was going to be no escape for him. Yet even in prison, and even in the face of death, John still pointed the people to Jesus. But there is a wonderful contrast going in our gospel reading for today. You can take Herod and you can take John and contrast the two of them. Here is Herod with all of the power of the world behind him. And he's the one who's afraid. John, he's the faithful one. Herod hears the truth. He's willing to listen to John. But he won't keep it. He won't send Herodias away. John hears the truth and cannot help but share it. Powerful, mighty Herod is weak. While the weak John the one who is truly strong and mighty. That is the very gospel before our eyes, my friends. God's power is made perfect in weakness. The last are first. The weak are made strong. Jesus' death for us gives us life. And so John's preaching would not be silence. Whatever the Lord placed into John's ears, even if it meant that he was to die, John was going to preach with full-on gusto. For John is a witness, not only in his life, but also in his death. He confesses that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it cost John his life. But what about us? And I ask myself this question. This is not just for you. What about us? Are we bold like John? 
fearless in the face of immorality, the changes of our community, the growing acceptance of things that even 10 years ago would never have been thought to be accepted in polite society. Are we bold in pointing people to Jesus? Or like Herod, who hides in the shadows, who listens to the truth, but then when it comes to being in the public light, powers in fear because of what might happen to him. The Christian church in America needs to ask itself the same. Do we become frightened by being irrelevant and not woke enough that we give in to the society's demands that the church no longer sounds or looks like the church, but just becomes another activist crowd. Or in our weakness, do we stand boldly proclaiming the truth of God's word and willingly suffer at the hands of those who would try and silence the word of God? Repent. Honestly, there is a bit of Herod in every single one of us. Lukewarm, non-committal. We are more afraid of looking bad and unloving toward the world than we are afraid of God's wrath over our sin. We would much rather sit back at the dinner table and not share our faith, even with our families anymore, rather than to cause more strife. I'm pretty sure our Lord reminded us that the gospel would bring about strife in the family. But instead, we ought to leap for joy in the gospel. For that is our salvation. That we would beg our neighbors to hear the gospel and to flee from the devil's snares. In fact, I was talking to one of our members about this the other day. And yes, most of the world is not going to care, unfortunately, but the angels in heaven will rejoice over one sinner who repents. More so than over the 99 who won't need repentance. That we would be faithful witnesses to Jesus. And so we need John's voice ringing in our ears. Prepare the way of the Lord. We need the message of John to give us strength and hope. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For even in death, John points us to the cross. For it is in the suffering and death of Jesus that gives us consolation when we have to suffer, when we die for faith. So John's death isn't just a warning for us, it's a witness. Herod tried to silence John's message. But you heard it again today. Harry couldn't. The world tries to silence the message that Jesus died and rose for the forgiveness of your sins. But 2,000 years later, the message is still being proclaimed throughout the world. Jesus is crucified under Pontius Pilate, but not even the grave could stop him. We're going to be sued. Soon, I suppose. And maybe not our congregation necessarily, but it would not surprise me if groups don't begin suing Christian churches that have not fallen in line with the way that the world is going. 
we will be attacked for our confession. But remember this. The church is built on the rock of Christ's death and resurrection. The world's going to rage around us. But we are safe in the ark of the church. The devil is going to scowl at us. But he's already defeated. Paul may have been in prison, but even in captivity, he wrote of the hope that he has in Jesus. Is God still at work in John's death? You betcha. For even in death, John points us to Jesus. Is the world defeating God? Yeah. For in his defeat, you receive victory over sin and death. His suffering is your suffering. His death is your death. His resurrection is your resurrection. So faith looks at John's head on a platter. Take your bullet and cover home with you this week. Stick it on the fridge. And remember that this is the gospel of the Lord. Your faith isn't blind. It sees the tragedy and the injustices that we face. But faith always looks beyond it. Looks to Jesus, crucified for you, for John, and for this messed up backwards world. Believe it. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to please rise as we continue our service with the singing of the offertory.
For the sake of Christ, be merciful to those who oppose you. And remember that you desire all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Emboldened by our adoption through Jesus Christ, O Father, we bring before you every need of body and soul. Lavish the riches of your grace on Christopher, Peggy, Larry, Vicki, Pauline, Jeff, Joan, Lillian, Richard, Jennifer, Vic, Tammy, Hilda, Karen, Lori, and Jackie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, you are a God of the living and not of the dead. We thank you for calling Eileen to faith by your word and the Holy Spirit. And in the midst of grief and sadness, give to Diana and her family hope and faith in the resurrection to all flesh that will happen when your Son comes again on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Good Shepherd and her members. You call us by name and have predestined us for eternal life with you. We pray for your grace upon our members and their families, especially for Richard and Carolyn, for Gail and Vic, for Joan and Kenneth, Jennifer, Christopher and Samantha, for Larry and Tammy, for Lisa and Kenneth, for Jared, Kyle and Adam, and for Beverly. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You have blessed us, O Father, in your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. As you have sealed us with the promised Holy Spirit for an eternal inheritance in him, bring us now in repentance and faith to receive your Son's true body and blood, to be strengthened to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is we can rise so to do. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Please rise. This true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve your body and soul in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. Just a couple of things to remind you of. It seems as we get further on into the summer, there's a little bit less going on at this point in time. But this afternoon at 2 o'clock, you are invited to join the Saints at Emmanuel as their new senior pastor is installed this day as we pray for him this morning, Pastor Foster. Uh, so if you would like to come and join the congregation, please do so. Sarah and I will be there this afternoon if I haven't fallen asleep beforehand. Did you actually record that, Dave? No? Okay, thank you. Make sure M Murdy edits that part out. <laughs> this whole part isn't really going to be on the YouTube, okay. so... Well, that's good to know. I can say whatever I want then. Yeah, the, the, you're, you're beyond no. the... No, within reason. Within reason. It, okay, it's, thanks, Keith. You're yeah, you're, you're beyond the limit on the second oh. piece, so... Oh, well, that's good. Um, also, a reminder, ladies, this coming Saturday up at St. Peter in Richmond, um, the LWML will be having their annual um, prayer service, so you're invited to come and join us up there. If you didn't know, I am the zone counselor for the LWML in this area, so I would love to see all of your bright, shining faces. That's at 10 o'clock up there. Um, and then at 1 o'clock, it's going to be a busy Saturday for me. Maybe I'll just wear my robes wherever I'm going that day. I'll just switch out my souls. Um, Christ in New Baltimore will be welcoming their new pastor, Pastor Alec Harrison, um, who I just found out earlier this week, finally moved here officially. So he and his wife are here in Michigan looking forward to his ordination and installation this coming Saturday at 1 o'clock. So if you'd like to join um, with our brothers and sisters there in celebration and thanksgiving for the gift that God has given to them, Please do so if you've got some time. And of course, you're always invited to Bible class downstairs after service. We're going to be talking about widows today. What St. Paul has to say to Timothy about the widows of the congregation. So ladies, for the few of you who are widows in our congregation, this might be a good one for you. <laughs> and for the rest of us, it will also be a good one as well. Okay? Did I ever get anything here? The basket was delivered. Yes. We, so we did deliver Pastor Aleph Harrison's basket and all of the goodies that we collected for him. In fact, they delivered it officially to him on the day that they were moving in. So hopefully they had something to eat and were able to go and maybe get a coffee after all of the busyness of moving in. Um, so that has been dropped off. Also, we did receive another card from another pastor. Um, to thank us for the gifts that we sent to them. And that, again, is down on the bulletin board um, down by the stairway if you want to check that one out as well. And church cards are Yes. There are also no church business cards. If you would like to pick some up, they're on the little um, bookcase just outside where we normally keep the hymnal supplement 98s. So they're on that little case right next to it. There are also bookmarks there if you would like some, and of course, pass them along to friends or family if you know you've got people that you would like to share um, Good Shepherd with and the gifts that God has given to us here. Okay? We can always print more, don't worry about it. Anything else here? No? Okay. Christ is risen! He is risen.